All right, let me minimize this so I can actually see it. Okay, um, this is, uh, yeah, very uh, brief. I've, I'm gonna try to go through it pretty quickly because it's got uh, 16 slides, but uh, <clears throat> grounding and fusing uh, is kind of an important thing, especially when you're working on the, the old AA5 radios with the hot chassis. Um, <clears throat> in general, why is anything grounded? Well, the power companies ground one of the lines coming out of their uh, generators, and they keep they do that to keep the atmospheric mostly to keep the atmospheric uh, from uh, building up a static charge on their lines. Um, kind of ties everything down so that the hot lines are only you know whatever x amount of voltage to ground um and uh you know of course if they're lightning strikes and things like that that's going to uh, affect it but they uh they do tie down one of the lines all the way basically to your house um when the power transformer coming into your house they have a uh, center tap typically grounded on the supply side and uh, when it comes out to your house, uh, they have it grounded at the pole so that it's not floating. And uh, it also, uh, again, makes sure that no metal, grounded metal enclosure can be at a voltage higher than the earth at which you stand. So if you have a metal box, for example, and a hot wire short circuits to it, um, it will pull it down toward ground and hopefully trip a circuit breaker so that uh, you don't have you don't have a refrigerator or whatever that's 120 volts uh, above the ground where you're standing so if you touch it and you're standing on ground or touching something like a water faucet the current could go through you if that means um, in your house, uh, in the main panel, you've got, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not here. Um, you have your uh, mains coming in, your two hot wires um, that feed a, a pair of bus bars where the circuit breakers clip onto. And each one of these um, hot wires would be 240 volts between them but 120 volts between each one of these and the neutral, which is also grounded. Um, I don't know if you all can see my cursor or not. I'm trying to point out these things. Um, the reason is because the phases of these are opposite and this goes to the center tap of the transformer, if that makes sense. Um, they also, at the main panel coming in of a building, they, they tie this to ground through a series of ground rods. And this is the only place where the neutral bus can be connected to the grounding point is in the original panel coming in. And the reason they do that is if there's an open circuit somewhere, uh, either accidentally or because somebody's working on it, you could uh, back feed 120 volts uh, to a neutral that's broken and then you grab hold of the white wire and get a shock. Um, <clears throat> if there's a short circuit again to your you know refrigerator radio or whatever um, it actually goes to the ground wire which goes back to the neutral which causes there to be a short circuit seen between any of these, uh, either of these hot wires and neutral. And hopefully that's going to, it's, it's supposed to uh, trip the circuit breaker basically. You cannot just connect your radio to earth. Um, some people do this with antennas, but that's different. Uh, there is not enough current is not enough currents going to flow through the earth 
the substitute for that ground wire going all the way back to the panel and connecting to this neutral bus. Um, you know, there might be a thousand ohms or 10,000 ohms, depending on the, the, the earth, how wet it is, et cetera, between that neutral bus. Again, we're trying to throw the, sort of the ground and say that, uh, oh, my radio is grounded when you've got, you know, a two wire cord. If that, does that make sense, everyone? I hope. Yes, yes. Um, okay. Again, the main purpose of the ground connection is, uh, well, I've got an internet connection unstable. Hopefully I'm still on. Uh, the main purpose of the ground connection, again, is to provide a very low resistance back to that mains neutral bus on a dedicated wire to open any circuit protection immediately upon a short to the chassis. By being the neutral bus also being tied to the earth ground current leakage to that chassis that is insufficient to throw a circuit breaker or blow a fuse, the earth grounding of the bus will limit how much voltage can build up on the chassis of above the earth on which you stand or grounded objects may touch water faucets, etc. Let's say there's just, you know, a hundred milliamps. We'll, we'll just say that because uh, that's the standard at which they, or that's fatal. A <laughs> uh, hundred milliamps leaking, it's not gonna trip that circuit breaker unless there's a, a, a dead, short but it would still if the radio chassis is grounded it would help pull that down so that the current would flow to ground instead of even though there's some resistance there because maybe it's just a transformer leaking uh, uh, to its cabinet um, and then back to the chassis Okay, so that's another good reason to ground that, that radio to the, the green wire that goes to the pin that goes into your socket back all, all the way back to the neutral bus and is tied to ground. A typical um, is unmodified here. Uh, the better ones in the later days uh, called UL uh, rated radios had the common uh, negative to the the B minus basically this symbol here is actually separate from the metal chassis so because these plugs run polarized you could plug them in either way and this side be hot or this side might be hot um and electrically it doesn't matter the radio is just going to see that go ahead and generate um right from chassis okay um, and it is connected typically by a small capacitor. Your audio is dropping okay. out a lot. Yeah, yeah, we're missing your audio. I'm sorry. To some degree, but. Okay. We can hear you now. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know where I cut out. Um, but you will see on a UL uh, rated radio, and this is 1950s standard radio, um, 1950s standard is not necessarily the current standard for safety. But there will be a, a capacitor oftentimes shunted by a 330,000 ohm resistor or something like that. And this will take any radio frequency 
between the chassis and the ground and make them uh, electrically the same so that your IF cans and shielding and things like that will be grounded through this. Uh, but if there is a, uh, a short circuit between the B minus, which might be hot, you got a 50-50 chance. Uh, this will only pass a little bit of current, very little, maybe a few milliamps at, uh, 100, at 60 hertz. And so you might get a little zap or tingle off of the chassis if something like that happens, but um, it's not going to be the same as if you just tied this straight to here, straight to the metal chassis, if that makes any sense. Um, this capacitor typically was an old wax capacitor and they can short circuit very easily. Um, they should really be replaced with uh, a Y2 safety rated capacitor that's designed to fail open and not pass any current. Um, if there's a, say, a lightning strike or something nearby. And you also don't want to oversize this thing. Um, probably a 0.05 is about as big as you'd want to go and, and whatever they factory put in. If you put in like a one microfarad or something, it'd be able to pass a lot of current to the chassis in the case of a short circuit. And you could get, you know, a potentially fatal shock off of that chassis. Hey Rob, how about, uh, what if you go smaller on that capacitor? A lot of the safety caps I see are 0 0.01 or 0 0.02. Yeah. Uh, is, are those if fine? Any, I, yeah, I would err on the side of uh, smaller. Um, a lot of times I use a 0 0.01, even if it had a 0 0.05 or 0.047 on it. Um, and it works just fine because at radio frequency, it's still, you know, two or three ohms to the chassis. So all of your shielding and things like that still work. Um, so this is connected basically to B minus uh, the zero signal point through that capacitor. So at RF, everything's grounded. So it's got to be there. Um, does that make any sense? Yeah. Right here it says, uh, often a 01 will work just fine as even safer. Again, uh, you should always, for that capacitor, use a Y2 safety rated capacitor. The best way to handle this is actually to install, if you can, whoops, a uh, three wire grounding cord and tie the chassis directly to that green wire that goes back to the neutral bus in case there is a dead short to the chassis and that would uh, blow in the worst case scenario your circuit breaker at the panel um, but if you put a small fuse in here like a one amp or two amp or something like that uh, that fuse should blow before there's a hell of a lot of damage and you know you don't want 12 amps of current flowing through there and it's just not enough to trip a 15 amp circuit breaker so the best way is to put a three wire cord and a fuse that goes before anything, before a switch, before anything. If you do not install a three wire cord, again, uh, you want to make, you would want to put in a uh, polarized cord and hopefully, uh, hopefully the house is wired correctly and the wide blade uh, would go to, uh, the neutral so it would be actually hopefully at ground potential back in the panel and that will be the one that goes to the b minus so that you know that when it's plugged in properly if your outlets are correct um, the low voltage side goes to the b minus and then is connected to the chassis with the uh, safety capacitor um again we've got a fuse here before anything before the switch on the volume control etc 
I would not rely on this filament. You know, it's supposed to be a fuse, but I would not rely on it on the 35W4 or, or whatever uh, you've got, maybe a, a 35Z5 rectifier tube, et cetera. Uh, transformer type radio. The high voltage side is isolated by the transformer from the metal chassis. Um, this is uh, taken from an original uh, unmodified uh, schematic of a, an old Zenith. And here they just have a probably a wax capacitor going across the lines here. Now, if that shorts, eh, it's not great, but hopefully it would you know, trip circuit breaker because there would be uh, unlimited amount of current flowing between these two lines. The high voltage side again is isolated by the uh, from the transformer. Um, so your ground here um, is not necessarily going to be hot. Now, if you got one of these and it has a short or leakage, and it can be from either side of the transformer. Um, your chassis, because it's metal uh, and it's floating, not really connected to anything other than ground, um, there's no return path here back to the neutral uh, or a grounding pin here to blow a fuse or trip a circuit breaker. So this could be a hot chassis um even if you have a transformer radio now they are a bit safer than the uh on the uh, old aa5s with the quote unquote hot chassis but uh, they can still be a problem uh, again much like doing the uh the uh, ungrounded or hot chassis type radios uh, your best policy on these, is, and especially important with a transformer type radio, is to just go ahead like a console. You're, you're probably going to have room to go ahead and put on a three-wire uh, cord. Um, you're going to put that to ground, replace this with a safety capacitor, and put a fuse here. So, Rob, if you, Rob do you have a typo there? Because that, shouldn't that be an X2 capacitor? No, no, it could be an X2 capacitor, but again, um, the X2 is designed to uh, fail shorted, and that's supposed to cause a short circuit and let you know that oh, I no longer have my line filter on it. Um, whether it's going to line to ground or across the... Um, the two lines, it's probably better to use a Y2 safety capacitor, in my opinion. If so there's any we can use device, Y2s for everything then, right? In my opinion, yes. Because okay. um, the Y2 is designed to fail open. So if there's a lightning strike on the line or near nearby and you get a spike, um, this thing will pop open, may or may not blow the fuse. Um, worst case scenario, you lose some line filtering and start picking up noise on your radio. Okay. Um, this is kind of an overlooked thing uh, too. If uh, there are any separate powered devices like in a console record player, speaker, et cetera, you, you should run a ground wire to those too ideally um should be at, at least as as large as the power cord uh, gauge and tie it to the main grounded chassis because there can be a short circuit in the record player there can be a short circuit in the speaker um and those can be hot and then you can have hot metal where it's exposed even if the chassis is not hot because of a short um so it could occur out on a peripheral device and if you tie it back to the chassis and ground, then it will blow the fuse instead of having a hot speed. This actually happened. Um, I had an ungrounded field coil speaker and 
somewhere in there there was a short circuit and it became a 450 volts DC because of the power supply was running through the field coil and I shoved the chassis back a little bit to work on it and pow big old spark so I put my meter and I measured about 450 volts I grabbed the speaker in one hand and the chassis at the same time and shoved them um, that was a short between the B plus going to the field coil and the speaker frame if the speaker frame had its had a grounding wire like I just described running to it, the fuse would have blown and I would have had to trace down the cause why it wasn't running and it never would have uh, become a hot speaker frame. Um, uh, making connections, this is important. Uh, don't just strip a wire and stick it under some random screw and don't don't count on sheet metal screws. Remember, uh, whether you have a fuse in your radio or not, you should have maximum current flow to that ground wire if there's a short circuit. Um, don't just solder it to the chassis. Uh, your best way is to put on a, a uh, crimp on connector on stranded wire because they don't crimp well onto solid wire. And if you can't find a hole, you know, make a hole. Eighth inch is typical, you know, just drill a hole somewhere. Uh, make sure this is all clean and shiny, of course. Tie that thing down with a nut and then put another nut on top of it and tighten that down. That'll keep uh, some pinhead from coming along with a screwdriver later and say, oh, I'm going to make some adjustments and try to take that screw out. You know, I'm talking about the owner of the radio who might be just totally clueless this way the screw won't come out uh, with a single nut uh, you can back the screw out and it'll get loose it may not come all the way out but now this thing's just flopping around up here uh, this way it, it's locked okay so that's my recommendation and you can crimp and solder this but do crimp it first please <laughs> Fuses. You're simply replacing a fuse. Uh, of course, you're going to have something on the fuse, uh, the fuse holder or the label of the unit. And you might see that more typically, say, on a, a 1970s stereo receiver or something where it's going to say, you know, use a one amp, 250 volt fuse, etc. Um, stick with that. Um, Typically, you're going to want to keep the amp rating of the fuse at about 150 to 200 percent of the normal running current. And when you turn the radio on, there's going to be a short surge while the filaments heat up, and that's fine. That's not going to blow your fuse unless you're, you know, seriously undersized. Uh, don't use a, a some fuse that you found for a car, or something like that, because it might be rated at 12 volts and. and um, if there's a the fuse tries to open a short circuit, 120 volts AC can arc across that uh, little gaps. So you'll want to use a regular 250 volt rated fuse. Fast blows, I've never had a problem with them. Good rule of thumb is a one amp for tabletop radios. You can go less, but they're you know they're kind of hard to find, and the National Electrical Code generally rec recognizes a one amp fuse as being uh, minimum standard size that would be you would pick the next size up which would be a one amp fuse from the uh, from the running current um, if you got a record player or something like that you might want to go with 1.5 or 2 amp but um, this this fuse, a fuse like this is going to blow uh, more reliably and faster and with less arc damage or you know chances sparks flying and starting the cabinet on fire than relying on that 15 or 20 amp circuit breaker on the mains to trip. And uh, that's what I got.